Alright, here we go. Alright. Okay, my microphone is on. So I'll have to I'll have to redo that joke again. <laughs> okay. Alright. <clears throat> No, video mode, no good, no. Okay, so we're going to do um, a few questions from uh, the Nelson Physics. Nelson Physics 12, this is the newer version of the textbook. And we're doing sample problem number one. Uh, this is new from uh, page 78. And the question is as follows. It says a sled has a mass of 14 kilograms is and is on a hill that is inclined 25 degrees to the horizon. So imagine I've got a sled that is like this. Okay. And that right here, you've got a sled like so. Fun. Okay, there's your sled. And this is tied to this pole like so. Okay. And this incline right here is 25 degrees okay all right the mass of the sled is 14 kilos mass of the sled is 14 kilos that's 25 degrees theta is 25 degrees okay and uh, the hill is very icy which means friction fk is negligible so let's say it's zero the rope is parallel to the hill as shown uh, calculate the magnitude of the tension. So they want us to find the tension in this rope, number one, and calculate the F normal. Two of the two things that we're looking for. Okay? So first things first. What will my FBD look like? What will my FBD look like? Okay, so, yes. Okay. So force normal going upward like so. And then of course you're going to have your FG this way and FGY and of course FGX. Okay, just make this hill a little bigger so this looks a little better. All right, now um, what we have is, of course, there's your FG, FGX, and FGY. Okay, there's your FN. Uh, tension, of course, is opposite to the force, the, G, the X component of your gravity. So there's your tension going in the opposite direction. Now, of course, <clears throat> in terms of F net, what is the F net X? What is the F net in the X direction? Is there an F net? Is there an F net? Is the object moving? No. So F net is zero. F net X is zero. What by F net Y? It's also zero. Is it moving? No. So it's also zero. So that's one thing that we know. In terms of F net, the X component is zero. In the X component, F net X. And F net Y in the Y component is also zero. So we're going to just draw out what are the forces that exist in the X direction. So in the X direction, I have FGX minus FT, which equals to zero. Correct? Okay. So therefore, your FGX equals to your FT. Since the net force is zero, those two forces have to be equal to each other. Of course, FGX is going to be MG sine theta, which equals to FT. Your FT is going to be, draw it out or write it out, 14 times 9.8 times sine of 25. And what do you get for your FT? Fifty-seven point nine eight. So fifty-seven point nine eight uh, newtons. That's the tension. So about fifty-eight newtons. Okay. Number one, this is the tension in the string. Does that make sense? 
Okay. Now the next question is what is fn? Well, in the y direction we said f net y equals to zero. And in the y direction there are two forces. There is fn minus fgy, which equals to zero. Correct? <clears throat> so therefore your fn equals to your fgy. So your fn equals to mg cos of theta. Draw it out or write it out and you get fn which equals to 14 times 9.8 times cos of 25. And what do you get for your fn? 124.5? Point 0.35. 124.35 newtons. So we see in the y direction, those two forces are opposing each other. X direction, those two forces are opposing each other. Yes. The direction would be, this would be downward if you want to say, or upward. So you could say this is upward or against gravity. Okay. And here this would just be against the FGY component, perpendicular to the surface. Are we good with this? Okay. We will do another one. Yes, another one. Let me finish it and then you can ask me any questions you want. Okay. All right. Let's erase this. Let's do same textbook, new textbook again. Uh, page 81, sample problem number two. Erase it. Yes. Ready? Okay. Okay, so same textbook, new page 81, uh, sample problem number two. Okay, and uh, this is uh, a slight rework of the first pulley question that we did. And the question is as, as follows. Bless you. Well, at least now you're in two videos. Okay, uh, no you can. All right, so uh, I have one mass right here and it's over a pulley and I have another mass right there. Okay, now remember, so far we have not added friction to any of our questions. Okay, all right, so uh, this right here, uh, the mass of this object is M2 and this mass is uh, 40 kilos. Okay, and this is M1, and this is 32.5 kilos. So the question is, a crate with a mass of 32.5 kilos sits on a frictionless surface. This surface right here is frictionless, so no friction, Fk equals to zero. Okay. Uh, and is connected to a second crate by a string that passes over a pulley, as shown in figure 7a. The second crate has a mass of 40 kilos. The pulley is frictionless, has no mass. The string also has no mass. Determine the acceleration of the system of the crates and the magnitude of the tension. So again, we want the acceleration of the system, which means both the masses, and the tension in the string. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so again, we're going to do this question using or starting with our FBDs. So start with right here. So you've got FG2 downward, correct? Tension pulling me upward. Now this is one string, so my tension is going to be conserved all the way through. Cool? Okay, here, of course, I've got FN, I've got FG, and I've got FT. Do I have a FK going backward? No, because this is a frictionless pulley. My FK equals to zero. So far so good? Okay, let's make our system of equations. And my system of equations is going to be as follows. It's going to be FG2 
minus Ft, which equals to mass 2 times acceleration. Correct? This right here, there's only one force that is pulling it forward, Ft. So that's going to be Ft, which equals to mass 1 times acceleration. Now you're probably wondering, what about Fn and Fg? Well, the Fn and Fg are not affecting the motion in any way, shape, or form. They cancel each other out. They're not even part of this equation. So we're not even going to mention them. So negative Ft and positive Ft, we're going to add the two equations together. This and this cancel out. And you're left with Fg2, which equals to M1a plus M2a. Correct? So Fg2, which is mass 2 times gravity, divided by mass 1 plus mass 2 equals to A. Are we okay with that? I know I jumped a step here. So A equals to mass 2, which is 40, times 9.8, divided by 40 plus 32.5 kilos, of course. What is your acceleration of the system? Yeah, what do you get? 5.4? Okay. 5.41 meters per second squared. As I said, for this mass, it's going to be downward. For this mass, it's going to be forward. So that's my acceleration of my system. That's the first question that has been solved. Now, the second question is looking at to figure out what my tension and my string is. Well, to solve my tension, I have two equations to solve. I can either do this one or I can do this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the second one. I'm going to say Ft equals to mass 1 times acceleration. So Ft equals to mass 1, which is 32.5 times 5.41, which is your acceleration. What does your tension come out to? 175.8 newtons. And of course, tension is upward here, forward here. Are we okay? Any questions, concerns? Okay. Yes. Well, as I said, we make that assumption. When I have a larger mass, when I have a larger mass, that that larger mass is going to pull the rest of the masses behind it. Does that make sense? So this is my larger mass. This has got 40 kilos. This one is only 32 kilos. And this is frictionless surface. There is nothing that is holding this object back. If there was friction there, then yes, we wouldn't have made that assumption. But there is no friction here. So I'm making that assumption that since there is nothing holding it back, this is what is causing my motion. And that's why this force is larger than that force. Okay? Yes. Well, you could use M22, but you can't. You have to use this equation then. I have to use this equation to figure out M2. Does that make sense? I can't just say Ft equals to M2 times acceleration. That would be incorrect. I have to look at this situation. There is my FBD. And in this FBD, Fg2 minus Ft equals to mass 2 times acceleration. Here, it's just Ft equals to mass 1 times acceleration. Does that make sense? You have to look at the FBD and then solve it. But remember, you're always using it in terms of systems of equations. Are we good with this? Okay, so we're going to do one more question from the old textbook. And I'm done with this recording.